Wormwood. The contemptuous way in which you tweet of gluttony as a means of catching souls only shows your ignorance. One of the great achievements of the last hundred years has been to deaden the human conscience on that subject, so that by now you will hardly find a sermon preached or a conscience troubled about it the whole length and breadth of the earth. This has largely been affected by concentrating all our efforts on the gluttony of delicacy and not the gluttony of excess. Your patient's mother, as I learned from the dossier and you might have learned from Glubos, is a good example. She would be astonished, one day I hope she will be, to learn that her whole life is enslaved to this kind of sensuality. It is completely concealed from because the quantities involved are small. But what do the quantities matter if we can use a human belly or palate to produce querulousness, irritability, and unkindness? Glubos has this old woman well in hand. She is a positive terror to hosts and waitresses. She is always turning aside from whatever is set before her to say, Oh please, please, all I want is a little bit of tea, weak, but not too weak, and just the teeniest, weeniest bit of really crisp toast. You see, because what she wants is smaller and less costly than what has been set before her, she does not recognize as gluttony her determination to get what she wants, however troublesome it may be to those around her. At the very moment of indulging her appetite, she believes she is practicing temperance. In a crowded restaurant, she gives a scream at the plate which some overworked waitress has set before her, and says, Oh, that's far, far too much. Take it away and bring me about a quarter of it. If asked, she would say she does this to avoid waste. But in reality, she does it because the particular delicacy to which we have enslaved her cannot bear to see the sight of more food than she happens to want. The real value of the quiet, unobtrusive work that Glubos has been doing for years on this old woman can be gauged by the way in which her belly now dominates her whole life. The woman can be said to be in the all-I-want state of mind. All she wants is a cup of tea properly made, or an egg properly boiled, or a piece of toast properly toasted. But she cannot find any restaurant or any friend who is capable of doing these simple things properly. Her properly conceals an insatiable demand for the exact, almost impossible palate of pleasures which she imagines she remembers from the past. A past which she describes as, when you could get good service, but which we know as the time when her pleasures were more easily satisfied and she had other things that made her less dependent on the pleasures of the table. The daily disappointment produces daily ill temper. Cooks give notice and friendships are cooled. If the enemy ever gives her the faint suspicion that she might be too interested in food, Glubos counters with the suggestion that she doesn't so much mind what she eats herself, but does like to have things nice for my boy. In fact, of course, her greed has been one of the chief sources of his domestic discomfort for many years. Now your patient is his mother's son, and so while you are working very hard, quite rightly on other fronts, you must not neglect a little quiet infiltration in respect of gluttony. Being strongly masculine, he is not as likely to be caught by the all-I-want camouflage. Masculinity is best turned toward gluttony with the help of vanity. He ought to be made to think himself very knowing about food. To pride himself on having found the only restaurant in town where steaks are really properly cooked. What begins as vanity can eventually be turned into habit. But, however you do it, the main thing is to make sure that the denial of any one indulgence, it matters not which one, puts him out. At that point, you will have his kindness, obedience, and justice all well in hand. Mere excess in food and drink is much less valuable than delicacy. Its main use is a kind of artillery preparation for attacks on chastity. On this matter, as on all others, keep your man in a state of false spirituality. Never let him consider the medical aspect. Keep him wondering what pride or lack of faith has delivered him into your hands, when a simple inquiry into what he has been eating and drinking for the past 24 hours would show him clearly where your ammunition comes from, and allow him by a very little abstinence to imperil your lines of communication. If he must think of the medical side of chastity, feed him the grand lie we have made all the humans believe, that excess in physical exercise and constant fatigue are favorable to this virtue. How they can believe this, in note of the notorious lustfulness of sailors and soldiers, you may well ask. We used school teachers to put the message out. People who were more interested in health as an excuse for games, and therefore recommended games as a promotion for health. But this whole thing is far too much for just the end of this video.